In this video, we're going to set up Tailwind, our customized fonts, and our color palette. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer, and I wanna help you level up and get you to where you wanna be. So if this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. I've also set up chapter marks within the description below, so feel free to jump around to the section that you need. This is a multi-part series on how to build a full stack application within Redwood JS. You can find links to the playlist and all the related parts in the description below. And if you wanna follow along with code, I've also included a link to the GitHub repo. This is probably going to be one of the easiest Tailwind setups that you've ever done in your entire life. Now inside the terminal, run yarn redwood setup UI tailwind CSS and hit enter. And that's it. Crazy, right? So what did this do? When installed prettier, post CSS, our loader, tailwind, auto prefixer, then initialize post CSS, tailwind CSS, and it created an index.css file. And it also configured a few things with prettier for us. So if we come into web inside of our config file, we now have a tailwind.config.js file. And so this is for our tailwind configuration. We also have inside of our source directory, an index.css file, which we had this before, but now it has some additional information here for working with our tailwind layers. So while we have both of these files at the ready, let's go ahead and set up some of our styling configurations that we'll need for our project. So let's start with fonts. So if we come back over to Figma and take a look at our project design here, we basically have three different fonts that we're using. We have Babus, which is this condensed font, and this is our display font mostly used for headings. We have Corona One, which is this wide font, and really the only place we're using this font is here within the header where we say, where the best news rises to the top. In fact, we'll probably get away with a smaller file size if we just turn this into an image instead of importing the entire font. Then last but not least, we have this font called Enter, which is a sans serif font used for all of our form labels and buttons and body copy. These are all Google fonts. We can just pull up Google fonts here. And if your display looks a little bit different than mine, this panel on the left can expand and collapse. You can also have a side panel here that will expand and collapse. So I'm just going to come in here and remove these fonts. So if you have fonts from a previous project, you can go ahead and clear those out as well. First, let's grab Babus. So there's really only one weight here that we need to worry about. So let's select regular 400. Now let's grab enter and that's with an I. And here we want to have a weight of 500 and of 700. Now we can click on this icon in the upper right to expand the selected fonts pane if it isn't expanded already. And I'm going to click on this add import option. And then I'm just going to copy the code inside. Now in VS code, I wanna head over to our index.css file and I'm going to paste this at the very top of our file. And since we're already inside of a CSS file, we do not need this wrapping style tag. Now we just need to update our Tailwind configuration for those particular fonts. So again, this is within our web config. We have this tailwind.config.js file. We already have some boilerplate code for us to work with. Now the key to working with a Tailwind config is understanding this extend object. If you add customizations inside of the extend object, then it will extend the classes that Tailwind gives you by default. If you don't stick your customizations in the extend block, it will override the Tailwind classes and you can only use your customizations. So as a general rule of thumb, I lean towards sticking everything inside of the extend block. But for our fonts, I don't need any of the fonts that Tailwind provides us with. So we can add this outside of our extend block. So I'm gonna call this font family. And first let's set up inner. This is a sans serif font. So I'm just gonna call this sans. And then it takes an array of fonts. And if it can't access the font enter, then it will look to the next font listed in the array as a fallback. We can just set this to the browser default sans serif as the fallback. 
Now for Babus, this is a condensed font. So we'll say Babus, Babus New. Now I'm getting a few highlights here and that's because it's not familiar with this particular word. So I'll just add that spelling to my workspace settings. Now, if you're not sure about the formatting for the font that you're using, if you come back over to Google Fonts and look at the section here where it says CSS rules to specify families, you can see here that it says Babus space new. So you could just copy this and paste this into your Tailwind config file. You can see enter is just a single word enter. Perfect. So now let's set up our colors and we have a handful of colors. So this should go pretty quickly. And for this, I do want our colors to extend the existing Tailwind palette. So I'll say colors and then we'll set up our object here. So let's come over to Figma to grab our colors. I'm using a little app called Sip. Now, as far as I know, this is a Mac only release and they've made some changes with their version three release. So I'm actually using their version two. When I use my keyboard shortcut, it will tell me what the color is. It's a hexadecimal value and it will also give the color a name. And typically when I'm creating my tailwind.config file, I'll just use whatever color name that SIP recommends. Now, when I click, it will copy that hex value to my clipboard. I come back over to VS Code and I'm gonna call my color Icterine and pass in that hexadecimal value that SIP gave me. If I come back over to Figma, let's grab this gray color. This is called Cinder. So we can say Cinder and pass in that hexadecimal value. And there's a couple places here where I have this pink color and this is called Telemagenta. So we'll say telemagenta, and paste in that hex value. Then I also have this blue color. If I grab this, this is fountain blue. Now the last color that I wanna grab is a very, very light gray over here. And this is called storm dust. So we'll plug that in as well. Now if we go to one of our page files, we can test out our fonts and colors to make sure that they are working correctly. So I'm just gonna pull up my disclaimers page here and let's put a Tailwind class name on our H1 here. And let's say that it has a font of condensed and let's set the text color here to Telemagenta. If I give this a save and we need to make sure that we're running Yarn Redwood Dev in the terminal and I pull up our page so it is pulling up our pink font, but it is not using our Babus font. So if I come back over here, let's take a look at our Tailwind config. Ah, we called this Babus instead of condensed. So now if we come back over to Chrome, you can see that is using our condensed font and it is coloring it pink. So it looks like at first glance that our fonts and colors are working. Awesome, as a quick recap in this video, we set up Tailwind and configured our custom fonts and colors. In the next video, we'll get Storybook up and running and take a look at some of its features. Storybook is one of my favorite front-end development tools and so underused. I can't wait to show you the value that it brings to a project. If you like this video and wanna see more videos on web design and development or to follow along with the rest of this series, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh goodness. Hmm. I make myself laugh. <laughs> okay, I think that's it.